For decades, the BBC's natural history documentaries have won international acclaim. These films featured science, high production values, and the authoritative voice of Sir David Attenborough, all of which helped inform and inspire young minds. But more recent films produced by Attenborough that include a climate change message seem to have departed from the values that made the BBC's wildlife documentaries so respected. Instead, Attenborough and his producers have advanced an escalating message of doom about the Arctic that is not supported by facts and which may have misled an entire generation of viewers. This is our planet. Planet Earth. In early 2006, in a two-part special entitled The Truth About Climate Change, Attenborough proclaimed that no other Arctic species was more at risk from melting ice than the polar bear. But the Arctic is now melting so fast that the whole intricate web of wildlife is under threat. And no species is more at risk than the animals at the top of the food chain, the polar bears. Viewers were told that Western Hudson Bay mothers were going hungry, causing fewer cubs to survive past infancy and population numbers to drop by a quarter, all because sea ice was melting three weeks earlier due to climate change. Now, because the ice is melting earlier each year, mothers are going hungry and are less able to provide for their cubs. Over the past uh, 25 years or so, that the condition of these bears is declining. Here we've got a female with a triplet litter. Attenborough's script writers had naively taken for granted that claims from Canadian polar bear biologists had a basis in science. We're seeing reductions in cub survival, things of that nature, all related to climatic warming. Rather than checking that declining female body weights and low cub survival had never happened before and could be safely attributed to climate change, the claims were reported to viewers as fact. It turns out published evidence reveals that polar bears in western Hudson Bay showed similar declines had happened in the 1980s and early 1990s, even though summer ice was abundant. Similarly, the final climate-themed episode of BBC's Frozen Planet, called Unthin Ice, also featured the plight of the polar bear. Without giving any figures, Attenborough echoed the claims of campaigning organizations like the World Wildlife Fund that polar bear numbers were dropping in many populations due to less summer sea ice. This mother and her cubs may well not get another meal until the sea freezes again in winter. There's not much to eat on land, and the fact is that the longer the cubs have to wait until the ice returns, the more likely they are to die. Longer summers with no ice are probably the main reason why many polar bear populations are dropping. What he failed to tell viewers was that most population declines blamed on climate change were only assumed to have happened. The Chukchi Sea population, for example, had never been counted, but because it had recently suffered profound summer sea ice loss, numbers were assumed to have dropped, and the region was assigned a declining population trend. In fact, only two populations had suffered an actual decline in numbers by 2009, while four were either stable or had increased. Officially, the global total had remained virtually unchanged since 1996. Later in the film, Attenborough again talked about starving bears and mothers of cubs going hungry, while showing biologists at work on an obviously healthy animal. But it's only by darting them in this way and keeping check on them year after year that we can be sure that we know what is happening to them and the population of polar bears as a whole. Over the last 30 years, many teams have been seeing the condition of their local bears deteriorate although not every bear is suffering. Later in Frozen Planet, Attenborough introduced viewers to a new climate change victim. Mother walruses, confused by the lack of ice, are crowding onto the land with their pups. This very tight crowding isn't normal, and it's caused many youngsters to be crushed to death. However, historical records and scientific papers on Pacific Walrus show Sir David was again being spoon-fed a fabricated story by BBC film producers and their activist conservation consultants. 
Over the next few years, there followed a disheartening BBC story in 2015 of a skinny polar bear struggling to catch seals in fragmented summer ice. The margin for error is tiny. And the cost can be great. And another emotional story in 2017 of a mother walrus trying to protect her calf from melting ice and a menacing polar bear. Every adult female needs to find a safe place where her 80 kilo pup can rest. The sea ice is retreating for much of the walrus's traditional range, so they now have to haul out on dry land. So the bear is looking for a walrus baby. But by 2018, Attenborough had become frustrated with the limited impact of the BBC's natural history films and was eager to spread a message of impending climate change disaster to the widest possible audience. He agreed to narrate a climate change-focused wildlife documentary series called Our Planet that was being co-produced by Netflix and the WWF. In their desperation to do so, hundreds fall from heights they should never have scaled. Released in early 2019, Our Planet made headlines with a scene that showed several walrus walk off a high cliff and bounce helplessly to their deaths on sharp rocks below. Attenborough told viewers that these animals died because global warming had caused a massive loss of summer sea ice. So the lives of walruses, like those of polar bears and seals, are changing. All are living at the frontier of climate change. He and the producers were aiming to shock audiences with this sequence, hoping it would motivate the public into taking action on climate change, and recognized it as the most powerful story in the series. Others suggested the wall spectacle might be a new symbol of climate change. However, many viewers were left distraught. Some objected it was misleading. Parents complained the sequence was especially hard on children. Animals help us in the environment, and if we don't have any animals, we, w we wouldn't really be able to survive. It's just so heartbreaking. The producers seemed surprised by the criticism, but defended their use of distressing images and narrative, claiming they had accurately depicted events caused by climate change. The Netflix film came shortly after National Geographic had published a video of an emaciated polar bear, which it portrayed as a victim of climate change. It showed another respected natural history organization misrepresenting facts in a story intended to mobilize support for a cause while claiming to inform, for which it later had to apologize. But Attenborough was on a roll and continued to push his climate change narrative at the expense of facts. Just the polar bear's presence is enough to spook the walrus. A few months after the Netflix film, and using some of the same walrus footage, Attenborough's BBC series featured a number of polar bears driving walrus off the very same cliff. Many walrus that climb the cliffs never make it back to the ocean. This was proof that the Netflix producer's account of walrus deaths had been manipulative and false. Yet commentators seemed not to notice. By 2019, Attenborough was still widely trusted based on work he did before climate change became an issue. But his recent shows about the Arctic have revealed that he is as capable as anyone of ignoring facts that don't fit his worldview and uncritically accepting statements that support his assumptions. The impacts of this destabilization will profoundly impact every country on Earth. What we do in the next few years will determine the next few thousand years. Please welcome Sir David Attenborough. Sir, you have the floor. It seems that a desire to tell powerful stories about climate change has led Attenborough and his producers to abandon their commitment to science. If we don't take action, the collapse of our civilizations and the extinction of much of the natural world is on the horizon. The greatest danger of telling emotionally charged and misleading stories of starving polar bears and dying walrus is that it puts a huge burden on naive young viewers. The, the most encouraging thing that I see, of course, 
is that the electors of tomorrow are already making that to themselves their voices very, very clear. The idealism of, of, of youth is something that should be treasured and, and respected. And, and uh, let us hope they maintain it into their adult life. Thank you. You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. Greta Thunberg, the Swedish teenager demanding action on climate change, told journalists that around 2011, teachers showed her films of starving polar bears that left her so traumatized about climate change that she was unable to eat or go to school. One of those films was almost certainly Attenborough's On Thin Ice episode from the Frozen Planet series. This mother and her cubs may well not get another meal until the sea freezes again in winter. And the fact is that the longer the cubs have to wait until the ice returns, the more likely they are to die. Greta was not alone. Young people around the world have been devastated by this and other more recent Arctic films. They watched these episodes at home and at school because parents and teachers trusted Attenborough's BBC productions to be accurate portrayals of the effects of climate change on the Arctic. That trust has been betrayed. Those early stories about starving polar bears helped destroy an entire generation's hope for the future while deflecting attention from real conservation concerns. The growing trend of youngsters experiencing unusual emotional distress and poor mental health, much of it attributed to stories of imminent ecological crises, began for many with misleading narratives about starving polar bears and escalated with the fabricated stories of dying walrus. You have broken up the world, really. I am a part of a very large group of people who have done it, and uh, you are definitely a part of that group too, so... David Attenborough has failed to ensure that the scripts he reads and the messages they contain are true reflections of the natural world. When I was maybe eight, nine, ten years old, then the thing that, that made me open my eyes for, for, for what was happening with the environment and the climate was, was films and documentaries about, about the natural world and what was happening, what was going on. That was what, what made me realize the situation. Due to the many false and misleading messages about the Arctic spoken by Attenborough and delivered by the BBC, a generation of young people need continued reminders that polar bears and walrus are currently thriving, despite recent sea ice declines. <laughs>